You know, I've always believed that our thoughts have incredible power. They're not just random ideas floating around in our heads. No, they're the building blocks of our entire reality. I remember when I first stumbled onto this idea in New York City, oh, many years ago now. It was like a light bulb went off in my mind. I thought, could it really be this simple? Can we really change our lives just by changing our thoughts? Well, let me tell you, after decades of exploring this, I can say with absolute certainty, yes, we can. Now, I'm excited to share some of what I've learned with you today. We're going to talk about how those first thoughts you have in the morning can set the tone for your whole day. We'll explore the difference between what I call power thoughts and poverty thoughts, and believe me, it's a big difference. We'll also dive into forgiveness, not just forgiving others, but forgiving ourselves too. It's such a powerful tool for healing. And I'll show you some practical techniques like mirror work and how to craft really effective affirmations. I hope you're ready for this journey. It's not always easy, but it's so, so worth it. Are you ready to discover just how powerful your thoughts can be? Let's get started. Let's talk about mornings. You know, those first few moments when you open your eyes and the world comes into focus. What's the very first thing you think? Because let me tell you, those initial thoughts, they're setting the stage for your entire day. I used to wake up and immediately start worrying. Oh no, I have so much to do today or I'm already exhausted, sound familiar? Well, I learned the hard way that this kind of negative self-talk was coloring my whole day before I even got out of bed. But here's the good news, we can change this. Imagine waking up and thinking, today is going to be a great day. Or I'm excited to see what opportunities come my way, feel the difference. It's like putting on rose-colored glasses instead of mud-stained ones. Now, I know it's not always easy to flip that switch. Our brains love routine, even when it's not serving us well. So here's a simple morning routine I've used for years. Before you even open your eyes, take a deep breath and say to yourself, thank you for this new day. I'm just that. Feel gratitude. Then, as you're getting ready, look in the mirror, yes, even with bed, head, and morning breath, and say, I love you. You're doing great. I know, I know, it might feel silly at first, but stick with it. Do this every morning for a week and see how it changes things. You're training your brain to start the day on a positive note. And here's a little secret. Even if you don't fully believe these affirmations at first, say them anyway. Your subconscious mind is listening and over time it'll start to accept these positive messages as truth. Remember. Every day is a new chance to set a positive tone for yourself. Your morning thoughts are like the front door to your day. Make sure you're opening a door you actually want to walk through. You know, I've come to realize that our thoughts fall into two main categories. I like to call them power thoughts and poverty thoughts. Now, what do I mean by that? Power thoughts are those that uplift you, that make you feel strong and capable. They're that I can do this and I'm worthy of love kind of thoughts. On the flip side, poverty thoughts are the ones that drag you down. The I'm not good enough or nothing ever works out for me thoughts. Now, here's the thing. These thoughts aren't just passive ideas in your head. They're actively shaping your experiences, your reality. When you think power thoughts, you're more likely to take positive actions to see opportunities. You stand a little taller, smile a little more. And you know what? The world responds to that energy. But when you're stuck in poverty thinking, it's like you're wearing blinders. You miss out on good things because you're not expecting them. You might even create the very situations you're afraid of. Let me tell you a little story. Years ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. Now that's scary news for anyone. But instead of falling into why me thinking, I chose to believe that I could heal. I affirmed every day I love my body and my body loves me, was it easy? No, but I refused to let poverty thoughts take over. 
And you know what? Not only did I recover, but that experience led me to help countless others. If I had stuck with poverty thinking, I might have missed out on my life's purpose. So I want you to start noticing your thoughts. Are they empowering you or limiting you? Remember, you have the power to choose. Every time you catch a poverty thought, flip it around. Turn I can't into I'm learning how it takes practice, but oh, the difference it makes. Your thoughts are like seeds. What kind of garden do you want to grow in your life? You know, life has a funny way of leading us exactly where we need to go, even when we don't realize it. My journey started in New York City back when I was searching for, well, something I just didn't know what. One day I stumbled into this little church. Now I wasn't particularly religious, but something made me stay. They were talking about this thing called science of mind at first. I thought, what in the world is this? It sounded so out there. The idea that our thoughts create our reality. Come on. But you know what? Something inside me resonated with it. It was like a little bell going ding, ding, ding in my heart. So skeptical as I was, I was, I kept going back. I started reading everything I could get my hands on. Ernest Holmes, Emma Curtis Hopkins, these names became my new best friends. And slowly, very slowly, I started to see changes in my life. The real turning point came when I faced a personal crisis. I won't go into details, but let's just say it was one of those moments where you either sink or swim. And I chose to swim. I threw myself into these teachings, started practicing affirmations, really believing that I could change my life. And you know what? It worked. Not overnight, mind you, it was more like planting a garden. You don't see results right away, but with consistent care, suddenly you've got this beautiful flourishing life. That's when I knew I had to share this with others. I started small, just talking to friends. Then I was leading little groups. Before I knew it, I was writing books and speaking to thousands. Looking back, I'm amazed at how far I've come. From that skeptical woman in New York to, well, here, I'm talking to you. It just goes to show you never know where life will take you when you open your mind to new possibilities. Remember, your journey is unique. But I hope my story shows you that change is possible no matter where you're starting from. You know, I've met so many wonderful people over the years, and do you know what almost all of them have in common? That nasty little voice in their head that just won't shut up. You know the one I'm talking about, don't you? It's the voice that says, you're not good enough, or who do you think you are to try that? Maybe for you it's you're too old or you're not smart enough. We all have our own personal greatest hits of self-criticism, don't we? Now, let me tell you something important. This voice is lying to you. It's not the truth. It's just an old record playing in your mind. And the problem is the more we listen to it, the more we believe it. This self-criticism, it's like poison for your personal growth. It keeps you stuck, afraid to try new things. It makes you doubt yourself at every turn. And worst of all, it robs you of joy or of feeling proud of yourself, of loving who you are right now in this moment. But here's the good news. You can change this. You have the power to transform that critical voice into your biggest cheerleader. Sounds too good to be true. Well, let me share a little secret with you. Every time you catch yourself in self-criticism, stop, take a deep breath, and then turn it around. If the voice says you're not good enough, you say, I am more than enough. If it says you'll never succeed, you answer back. I am capable of amazing things. It might feel silly at first. You might not believe it. But here's the thing, your subconscious mind is always listening. And the more you repeat these positive affirmations, the more they'll start to sink in. Try this every morning, look in the mirror and say, I love you, I really, really love you, feel uncomfortable. Good. That means you're pushing past your comfort zone. That's where growth happens. 
Remember, darling, you wouldn't talk to a friend the way you talk to yourself. So start treating yourself like your own best friend. Be kind, be supportive, be loving. Because you deserve nothing less. You are a unique, beautiful soul with so much to offer this world. Don't let that critical voice dim your light. Shine bright, my dear. The world needs your light. You know, darlings, I've learned a lot in my journey, but if there's one thing that stands out, it's the incredible power of forgiveness. Now, I know what you might be thinking, but you don't know what they did to me, and you're right, I don't. But what I do know is this forgiveness isn't about them. It's about you. When we hold on to anger, resentment, or hurt, it's like we're drinking poison and expecting the other person to get sick. It doesn't work that way. The only person we're hurting is ourselves. What forgiveness is like? Well, it's like cleaning out a wound. It might sting at first, but it's essential for healing. When we forgive, we're not saying what happened was okay. We're saying, I'm not going to let this pain control my life anymore. And here's something that might surprise you. The person we often have the hardest time forgiving is ourselves. We hold on to guilt and shame like they're precious possessions. But darling, they're not serving you. They're holding you back from loving yourself fully. Now, I'm not saying forgiveness is easy. It's not. But it is worth it. When you forgive, you free up so much energy. Energy you can use to love yourself, to pursue your dreams, to enjoy this beautiful life. Let me share a simple forgiveness exercise with you. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Think of someone you're holding resentment towards. Now imagine them as a child. See their innocence, their vulnerability. Say to them, I forgive you, I release you. I set myself free. Repeat this as many times as you need. And if you feel resistance, that's okay. Just acknowledge it and keep going. Remember, forgiveness is a process, not a one-time event. And don't forget to forgive yourself, too. Look in the mirror and say, I forgive you, I love you. You're doing the best you can do. Forgiveness is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And as it grows stronger, you'll find a sense of peace and freedom you never thought possible. Remember, my loves, you deserve to be free. You deserve to live a life, a life filled with love not weighed down by old hurts. Forgiveness is the key to unlocking that freedom. Use it. You know, darlings, we often talk about trusting others, but what about trusting ourselves? It's the foundation of everything, really. When you trust yourself, you're saying, I've got this. I can handle whatever life throws my way, and let me tell you, that kind of confidence is life-changing. Think about it. When you trust yourself, you make decisions more easily. You're not constantly second-guessing every little thing. You're not always looking for someone else's approval. And you know what that leads to? A deep sense of satisfaction with your life. Now, building self-trust doesn't happen overnight. It's like, well, it's like tending a garden. You've got to nurture it every day. And that's where self-care comes in. Self-care isn't just about bubble baths and face masks, though those can be lovely. It's about honoring your needs, setting boundaries, and treating yourself with kindness. It's saying, I matter enough to take care of myself. Here are a few simple practices you can try. Start your day by looking in the mirror and saying, I trust you, it might feel silly at first, but stick with it. Listen to your body. If you're tired, rest. If you're hungry, eat. Sounds simple, right? But how often do we ignore these basic needs? Keep your promises to yourself. If you say you're going to do something, do it. This builds incredible trust. And here's the beautiful thing. As you build trust with yourself, your relationships with others improve too. Because when you trust yourself, you're not looking to others to complete you or make you feel worthy. You're coming from a place of wholeness. You become more authentic in your interactions. You're not afraid to speak your truth or set boundaries. 
And paradoxically, this makes you more open to genuine connection. Remember, darlings, you are your own best friend, your own soulmate. Treat yourself accordingly. Trust yourself. Care for yourself. Love yourself. The rest of your life will fall into place when you do. Let me tell you about one of the most powerful tools I've discovered in my journey mirror work. Now, don't roll your eyes just yet. I know it might sound a bit strange at first, but trust me, it's absolutely transformative. Mirror work is exactly what it sounds like it's working with your reflection in the mirror. But it's so much more than just looking at yourself. It's about really seeing yourself, connecting with yourself on a deep level. Here's how you do it. Stand in front of a mirror, look into your own eyes and speak to yourself with love and compassion. Say things like, I love you, I accept you exactly as you are, or you're doing a great job. Now, I won't lie to you, it can feel awkward at first. You might even feel a bit silly, but stick with it because the benefits are incredible. To practice effectively, start small, maybe just 30 seconds a day. Look into your eyes, smile at yourself, and say one positive thing. As you get more comfortable, you can extend the time and add more affirmations. And the key is consistency. Do it every day, even when you don't feel like it, especially when you don't feel like it. That's when you need it most. Now, you might be wondering, what's the point of all this? Well, let me tell you. Mirror work helps you develop a loving relationship with yourself. It breaks down those walls of self-criticism and builds up self-self-acceptance and self-love. I've seen people transform their lives through mirror work. One woman I worked with couldn't even look at herself in the mirror when she started. By the end of a month, she was smiling at her reflection and feeling confident for the first time in years. Another gentleman used mirror work to overcome his fear of public speaking. He'd practice his speeches in the mirror, affirming his confidence and capability. Within weeks, he was volunteering to lead presentations at work. Remember, darlings, the relationship you have with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship in your life. Mirror work is a powerful way to make that relationship the best it can be. So go on, give it a try. Your reflection is waiting to show you just how amazing you truly are. Remember, affirmations are like little seeds we plant in our minds. And just like in a garden, what we plant is what will grow. So let's talk about how to craft these powerful little seeds. First things first, always use positive language. Your subconscious mind doesn't understand negatives. If I say, don't think of a blue elephant, What's the first thing you think of? A blue elephant, right? So instead of saying, I don't want to be sick, say, I am healthy and full of energy. Now, here's a little secret, use present tense. Say, I am instead of I will be. Your subconscious mind takes everything literally. So if you say I will be, it always keeps it in the future. You want to claim what you desire right now. Make your affirmation short, clear, and specific. I am confident and capable in all my endeavors is much more powerful than a long rambling statement. And here's the kicker, put some feeling into it. Your emotions are the fuel that powers your affirmations. When you say your affirmation, really feel it as if it's already true. Let me give you some examples. Let's say you often think I'm so forgetful we can transform that into my mind is clear and my memory is excellent. If you catch yourself thinking, I'll never have enough money, flip it to. I am a money magnet. Prosperity flows to me easily and abundantly. Now I know what some of you are thinking, but that's not true. I don't have a lot of money right now. Listen, darling, affirmations aren't about stating what's currently true. They're about creating a new truth. They're about programming your mind for success. Remember, every thought you think is creating your future. So why not make it a beautiful one? Let's start with just one or two affirmations that really resonate with you. Say them in the morning, say them at night, say them whenever you need a boost. And here's a little tip, write them down and put them where you'll see them often.
on your mirror, on your fridge, as the background on your phone. Surround yourself with these positive messages. You have the power to change your life, one thought at a time. Your affirmations are your magic wand. Use them wisely, use them often, and watch the magic unfold in your life. Remember, personal growth isn't like microwaving a meal. It's more like, well, it's like growing a garden. And just like a garden that takes time, patience, and a whole lot of faith. Now, I know we live in a world of instant gratification. We want everything now, 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 now. But real lasting change, that takes time. And that's okay. In fact, it's more than okay, it's necessary. Think about it. If you plant a seed today, you don't dig it up tomorrow to see if it's grown, do you? No. You trust that under the soil, things are happening. It's the same with your personal growth. You might not see results right away, but trust me, things are happening beneath the surface. Your subconscious mind is working even when you can't see it. And one day, just like that first green shoot poking through the soil, you'll suddenly notice a change. Now, let me share a little metaphor I love. I call it the cosmic kitchen. Imagine the universe as this big, beautiful kitchen. You place your order, that's your affirmation or your desire. Then what do you do? You don't run into the kitchen pestering the chef, asking, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? No, you sit back, relax, and trust that your order is being prepared. Maybe you chat with a friend, enjoy a drink, or just breathe in the ambience. That's what we need to do with our personal growth. Place your order, then trust the process. But here's the key you've got to keep believing, even when you can't see results yet. It's easy to give up when things don't change overnight. But remember, darling, every great change starts with a single step and then another and another. So be patient with yourself. Celebrate the small victories. Did you catch yourself before falling into negative self-talk? That's progress. Did you stand up for yourself in a small way? Bravo. And most importantly, don't give up. Keep affirming, keep believing, keep doing the work because one day you'll look back and be amazed at how far you've come. Remember, growth isn't always comfortable. Sometimes it's downright uncomfortable. But on the other side of that discomfort is a version of you that's stronger, wiser, and more aligned with your true self. So trust the process, darling. Your order is being prepared in the cosmic kitchen. And when it's ready, oh my, what a feast it will be. Drea Frying's this journey we're on, it doesn't have a final destination. Personal growth isn't something you achieve and then say, well, that's done. No, it's a lifelong adventure. Think of it like tending a garden. You don't plant once and walk away, do you? No, you water, you water, you weed, you weed, you nurture. It's ongoing. And that's exactly what self-improvement is like. Now, you might be wondering, how do I keep this up for a lifetime? Well, let me share a little secret with you. It's all about regular check-ins with yourself. Take a moment, maybe once a month, and ask yourself, how am I feeling in my relationships, my career, my health? Be honest with yourself. Where do you see room for growth? And here's the beautiful thing, there's always room for growth always something new to learn, to explore, to improve. Isn't that exciting? Maybe you want to learn a new skill or deepen your understanding of something you already know. Perhaps you want to work on your patience or your ability to listen. Whatever it is, embrace it. Read books, take classes, try new experiences, push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit each day. Remember, discomfort is where the magic happens. And most importantly, be kind to yourself along the way. This isn't about perfection. It's about progress. So my darlings, I invite you to see each day as a new opportunity for growth, to wake up each morning and ask, what can I learn today? How can I grow? 
because when you commit to lifelong learning and self-improvement, you're not just changing yourself, you're changing the world around you one small step at a time. And oh, what a beautiful journey it is. Well, my darlings, we've been on quite a journey together, haven't we? Let's take a moment to remember what we've learned. We talked about the power of our thoughts and how they shape our reality. We explored the importance of those first morning thoughts and the difference between power thoughts and poverty thoughts. We delved into overcoming self-criticism and the healing magic of forgiveness. Remember, forgiveness isn't about condoning behavior, it's about freeing yourself. We discovered the transformative power of mirror work and how to craft effective affirmations. And we learned that personal growth is a lifelong journey, not a destination. Now, you might be thinking, this all sounds great, but where do I start? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here are some simple steps you can take right now. One, start your day with a positive affirmation. Look in the mirror and say, I love you. Two, practice forgiveness of others and yourself. Three, try mirror work for just 30 seconds a day. Four, craft one or two personal affirmations and repeat them daily. Five, do a monthly check-in with yourself to see where you can grow. Remember, consistency is key. It's not about being perfect, it's about making a little progress each day. I encourage you to start your own affirmation practice today, right now even. Take a moment after this video to look in the mirror and say something kind to yourself. You might feel silly at first, but stick with it. The results will amaze you. And hey, I'd love to hear about your journey. Leave a comment below sharing your favorite affirmation or your experience with mirror work. Your story might just inspire someone else to start their own journey of self-love and growth. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more content on personal growth and self-love. Together we can create a more loving, accepting world starting with ourselves. Remember, you are so worth this effort. You deserve all the love and joy in the world. And it starts with loving yourself. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Until next time, keep shining your beautiful light.